session three of God on display. To be witnesses to God, we need to live out the message that we preach. Now, Paul spent quite some time in Corinth and established a, a group of believers there. But we have two letters that he wrote to them, and it seems that they weren't really living out the message very well at all. There was obviously division. There was obviously sexual immorality, taking one another to court. But most of all, it seems their lives really weren't much different from all the people around them. His greatest criticism for them was the way they were celebrating the Lord's Supper. This meal is the Thanksgiving meal. It's the meal where we recognise that Jesus died for all. It doesn't matter what our status is. We all become equally children of the Father. However, when they celebrated it, they seemed to be doing it in the style of a Roman feast. Now, Corinth had been a Roman colony, and so the Roman habits and social behaviour held sway here. A Roman feast was very structured. A Roman society itself was very structured. You had the top of Roman society with a group called the Equestrians, they were sort of like the knights, and right down the bottom, through I don't know, about 15 or 16 different stages, you get to the slaves. When they held a feast, the most important were served first, and they got the best food. Those deemed more important were set apart in a different room from the others, the lesser important in different parts of the house, and the slaves, well, well they were basically outside unless they were called in to serve. The slave was not given any food unless there were some scraps left over, they were allowed to eat it. After the guests had eaten the food, they would then start to drink and indulge in quite heavy drinking. And so that led to much drunken revelry. And Paul sees their celebration of the Lord's Supper as somewhat like this, just like another Roman feast. He says this, this is 1 Corinthians 11, 20 to 22. So then when you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers and as a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. You see, they'd let the world around them shape how they celebrated the Lord's Supper. And in doing so, they really destroyed its meaning. At the Lord's table, a slave should have been able to sit with an equestrian on an equal footing and share equally with them. This was to be a celebration of oneness in Christ. Yes, it would have brought criticism from the outside world that someone of high status would sit together with a slave and share the same as a slave. And they obviously weren't willing to stand out in that way. Paul had nothing but condemnation for them and even tells them, you are suffering weakness because of this. Have we allowed the world's ways to shape how we glorify God? Do we seek to be acceptable to the world by doing things in a worldly way? In that same letter, Paul also writes about the body of Christ and how a human body has so many different parts, but they're all important and all needed and how the perhaps more indecent parts are treated with greater honour. God created the body the way he did and that's the way it works best. We're the body of Christ, we are the church. Do we function as a body, using all the parts as they were meant to be? Are we a fully functioning body or are we a dysfunctional body? Because the world is watching. What are we witnessing to them? Mm -hmm.